everybody, it's me, Remy, the comic book poser, and I'm here to welcome you to Enter the Poserverse. Today's uh, pull list and definitive rankings is brought to you by Hams. Hams. Cheap-ass beer for when you can't find old style in the Midwest. Hams will do. It's delicious. And now, let's get on with the definitive rankings of last week's books. One, two, three, four. Like I said last week on the ridiculously long live stream on Tuesday, uh, one of the reasons why I want to put my picks of the week and weekly rankings and things like that out on Tuesday is, you know, if you only go to your shop once a week, uh, you know, my goal is to kind of talk about the books that I enjoyed. That way, if you missed something, uh, you can hope to swing by your LCS on Wednesday when you're picking up your normal pull list anyway to then you know be able to pick up something new so i read you know 12 or 13 different books last week in in addition to trades uh so i figure i'll keep this down to my top five uh coming in at number five is the boys dear becky i think this is fairly interesting and has the ability to be a hell of a story but as i noted in the review on the blog i haven't read the boys yet and you know, you can see by one of the turned sideways uh, trades on the shelf behind me, I'm going to rectify that by trying to, to fly through the boys uh, in terms of, of trades or being able to find it on something like Hoopla uh, to be able to stay ahead of the story. I think what's happening in Dear Becky has the potential to be really interesting. And I've seen a lot of my, you know, people I follow or a lot of my friends who read and loved the boys say a bunch of good things about Dear Becky. Uh, so really the the ranking at number five for the week is nothing of the fault of the book. That That's all on me. That I feel like I just don't have enough of the backstory to be able to understand what's going on. So number four from last week's books, Batman versus Superman number nine. Uh, I've enjoyed this book from the beginning. Uh, I know in looking at other reviews of it, it's kind of been hit and miss that you know this story seems to be a bit frantic in terms of jumping all around between the different kind of primary villain or what's going on but i think we're finally kind of getting delivered to us the you know who might be the major player throughout all of this that we've seen you know ross al ghul show up we've seen other you know people kind of pop up in different levels of the storyline and i think what happens in uh, this book, you know, the, the killing of the atomic skull, uh, really might start to give us some direction. So I'll always enjoy this book. I'll have some bias towards this book because it lets me feel like I'm reading both Batman and Superman and it's acknowledging enough of the characters for my lack of DC knowledge, uh, to know what's going on. Coming in at number three from last week, Nailbiter Returns. Now I'm in the same boat that I was uh, with with the boys, dear Becky, right? I have not read Nailbiter, but again, I've rectified that by buying the first volume of the trade. Uh, I know other people who are also playing catch up on Nailbiter, uh, but I read this book anyway to see what I was getting myself into. And I feel like um, while there is a lot of, you know, tipping of the hat to the original source material of Nailbiter, I think the the introductory, epi you know, issue you're seeing enough nods to the source killing that, you know, you're left questioning whether or not it's the real killer from the original series or if it's a bunch of copycats and what can be done to stop it, that I felt less lost, less lost looking into this first, you know, first book of Nailbiter Returns. Uh, I think there's a good chance that I will add Dear Becky and Nailbiter Returns both to my pull list to be able to play catch up, uh, with the the trades or you know things that i can find online to be ready for you know maybe probably not issue two coming out for both of those books uh but for um by the time the third issue comes out number two this is a book i was excited about and you'll notice that it was mentioned in both of the poser points of the week uh, that Reaver 8 showed up on my pull list this week. And then when I picked it up and went, um, this is part two of five, I had to look at the trade and go, 
well, you're an idiot and can't remember that most trades cover six books. Uh, and since the trade came out in February, Reaver number seven dropped in early March, right before everything got shut down. And then eight came out. I had to put this off to the side to go on Friday to pick up Reaver number seven. And I think this story is going to be a fascinating one. Right now, I think even if you did not read one through six in Reaver, you will not be a million percent lost in what's going on. Uh, because as of now, the story is focusing primarily on uh, two characters, Essen Breaker, who's the big dude who will, you know, smash everything and beat the crap out of everyone. And Rakala, who is hands down my favorite character uh, from the first volume of the trade. And looking at the cover for book three, uh, you might be finding out what has happened to a third player from the, the first story arc. Uh, but right now I feel like, you know, even if I had forgotten what has happened in Reaver one through six, um, I don't feel entirely far behind uh, in that book. It's enjoyable. It's good fantasy. Uh, the the coming threat is wholly different from the first arc, so you're getting good differentiation. And the last book of the week. Uh, the moment I read it, it stay, you know, it was the first book I knew I wanted to read in the, you know, comic book, uh, my weekly poll video that I did. You can see that I was more than willing to buy the only copy that my LCS had that Jason pulled to the side because it's damaged. And I said, I need to read this story now. Finger Guns number two. Finger Guns comes from Vault. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic uh, fantasy story, action story, uh, kind of del diving into potential tragedies of, of the two main characters that I think you're getting a lot of looks into what, what is driving these two characters. Uh, you see them explore a plausible uh, explanation as to why, you know, they might have different powers from the one versus the two fingers and the guns. Uh, and either it doesn't work for them or it was a trail that had gone cold. But I really think Finger Guns has the potential to be one of the, the best books uh, in, in all of 2020, just because it's a breath of fresh air uh, from the repetition of everything else. Go get issue two now. Hope that your LCS has it. And if they have number two, but don't have number one in stock, guess what? Finger Guns number one is up for a uh, free download on Vault's website, which you should do that. You should follow uh, the entire creative team on, on Twitter that you know, Justin Richardson is, has been someone who's been, you know, phenomenal to engage with online, not just in terms of talking about the, the book and the process behind it, uh, but in terms of talking about, you know, the ongoing situation with protests and how we ought to operate as ideal citizens to fulfill a role to create a more just world. So, you know, finger guns, hands down, is my pick of the week if you didn't read it you should uh and i you know i'm gonna hunt for the the wraparound variant cover that came out this week uh maybe to augment my damaged copy but if i get a nice copy that comes in uh to the shop next week with an extra you know um as they kind of top up the order or if diamond tries to make it right uh then i'll pick up another one because the book is that good you know I don't think I'm going to sell my copy of Finger Guns number two ever. Uh, but if it stays this kind of tilted in whatever bag and board I put it in tomorrow, uh, I can say the story was this damn good that uh, the you know my shop had only a damaged copy, and that's you know I had to buy it because I had to read it because I could not wait anymore. So that is your definitive rankings from last week's books, the books you could have picked up on June third, twenty ten. So that's everything that I've got. Hopefully you've pushed that like or subscribe button. Uh, remember, we've got a coming giveaway for when we, you know, hopefully sometime reach 100 subscribers on YouTube uh, for the Midtown, one of the Midtown variants of Dark Knight's Metal number one, uh, which is something that you could, you know, have as the perfect compliment when Death Metal comes out, I think, next week. I don't know. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Let me know if you have any 
any thoughts on what I should read or you want to disagree with me or say no for the love of God, don't buy that book. Uh, and as always, have a good one.